Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Jacqueline.
occupant of these premises. Why? Are you the occupant? No. Would you mind telling me the name of the occupant, sir? What's this all about? May I ask what you're doing here, sir? May I ask you what you are doing here? Would you mind answering my question, sir? I have a perfect right to be here. You are invited to come here. Would you mind telling me the name of the person who invited you here, sir? <laughs> yes. Yes, I would mind. Who invited you here? I'm sorry, sir, but I'm asking the questions. I wouldn't do that, sir. You mean you would hold me here by force? I'm afraid I'd have to, sir, if necessary. I'll stay where you are. Why should I? Would you please be good enough to lie down on the floor, sir? <laughs> what? Lie down on the floor? What for? Because I want to be certain you'll not do anything foolish, sir. Oh, wait a minute. Am I under arrest? Why should you think you'd be under arrest, sir? Because unless I am, I'm walking out of here. In that case, I'd have to try to stop you. Failing that, I'd use my whistle to summon assistance. There'd most probably be a bit of a disturbance, and... I don't suppose you'd want that, would you, sir? No. <laughs> Not, um, particularly. But I don't lie on any floor for anybody. Come on. Come on, make me lie down. <laughs> Any objection to coffee, sir? To heat up the coffee. Uh, I'll do it. Over there. Sergeant, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have the impression that in this country, the police can't just walk in... ...walk into somebody's house without a good reason. Your impression's correct. Sergeant. Inspector Morgan, uh, were you informed, sir, that the gramophone was playing music, jazz, I believe it was, sir, quite loud? Yes, I was informed. Are you the boss here? That's right. Your men just threatened to stop me by force if I left. Why? You have any idea? Oh, let's quit the guessing games. I asked you a simple question, just give me a simple answer. If there's some reason to hold me, I want to know. Now, you mean you think there could be a reason why you'd be held? I don't know any reason. Hey. Now look, I'm conducting an investigation which for the moment has led me to you. Now you adopted the attitude, you don't know what I'm after. You're 100% right, I don't know what you're after. Well, that's the usual answer we get from criminals of all types. Look, you'd better watch out what you're saying. The world is full of sweet little innocent newborn babes who don't know what we're talking about. Nasty cold. <coughs> Inspector Morgan, how are you? Well, do you really want to know? I feel like I've been kicked in the face by a horse. How are you, Inspector Westover? Never better. Been weekending in the country. Smart hat you're wearing. It appears I'm to be working with you. Yeah. 
Why do you think the Yard thought this one was so very special? I wouldn't conclude that the Yard thought this one was so special. Well, throwing two of the best men in the whole Metropolitan Force on the same case is like using a, a meat axe, a sharpen a pencil. The Yard wants me here, so here I am. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll let that, sir. You don't live here? You won't say who invited you or the purpose of your presence. What's your name? Wouldn't mean much to you. It's your nationality. Why do you ask me all these questions? <coughs> uh, Inspector Morgan here. Yeah. What did you get? Is it good, Jazz? All right. They can hang up now. We heard music. Loud and not too good. Which one of you two is the boss here? Neither. We carry equal weight. Maybe you can find out why he's holding me. I have a right to know. Yes, you have. The purpose of our visit has not yet been mentioned, Inspector. Don't worry about him. Don't give him everything he's entitled to. Sergeant. Sir. What were you doing here, anyway? Oh, thank you, sir. Waiting for someone. Who? A bit of fluff? All right. Supposing I do say I came here to meet a lady. You came to meet a lady? Dressed like that? I feel cooperative, Inspector. So I tell you, these are the only clothes I've got. <laughs> is, uh, is this her? You, you amaze me, Inspector. Is this a question one gentleman asked another? Oh, I'm not a gentleman. I know. It's just a man I was speaking. All right, let's check up on the birdie who resides in this little flat, shall we? Right. Kitchen, bathroom, wardrobes, get the name of a greengrocer, hairdressers, jewelers, bank books. Yes, Inspector Morgan. Whoever she is, she'll turn up and corroborate your story. Why are you so edgy? You think anybody would walk in here now with that army of yours around the house? Sergeant! Sir! Get the cars away from the front door. Get them dispersed in the news outside. And uh, tell that constable to come in. I want no one hanging about. Yes, sir. We're under siege, eh? Look, you seem to have pretty normal intelligence. You ought to be able to figure out that if you really expect the lady to come walking in here, there's no point in not telling me her name. I wouldn't have thought she was the Violet's type. I brought them. Oh, it's not the cost. It's the sentiment that counts, isn't it? Is he allowed to hold me without charge? Is that the regulations? You're on enclosed premises. Well, then, then tell me you are holding me under suspicion of housebreaking or whatever the charge might be. All right. We're detaining you as a suspected person on enclosed premises. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to say whatever you say will be used against you? <laughs> Anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. You feel better? All right, then, let's get on with it. What time did you get here? 5.25. 5.25. What time is your appointment? 5.30. Oh, she's late. She will be here. You sure? Very sure. You were alone when the uh, constable and the sergeant arrived. How did you get in? Walked. <laughs> the door was open. The arrangement was I was to walk in. You didn't have a key. No, the date was made by telephone. Uh, first time here? Yes. Well, were you surprised to find the door open and that she wasn't in? I thought she's just gone out for a few seconds. Well, it's now quite a bit past 5.30. She still hasn't arrived, is she? What's eating him? I understood the London police were famous for being polite. Decent people. <laughs> What was the name of that woman you arranged to meet? Now come and sit down for a minute. Go on, sit down. Now either you've got a simple explanation for your presence here or you're in very serious trouble, you know. Now what was her name? What sort of serious trouble? 
The serious sort. Her name is Jacqueline Cousteau. Well, that's how it's pronounced. Didn't she tell you? No. She didn't tell me. Where's she? Out there. Oh, just a minute. You think that this uh, Jacqueline Cousteau will corroborate your story? I don't think I know. It, it was she uh, who invited you to this flat. Yes, I told you. Do you know her well? What's your name? Van Royen, Jan Van Royen. Well, what, what do you do for a living, Mr. I'm Van a Royen. painter. A painter? Artist. Look, I, I want to see Jacqueline. All right, go on. Did you know? Yes, yeah, she's dead. <laughs> you bastard, Morgan. That you have to do it that way. Give him a shot of brandy. Have cool. identified the body? Yes, by the contents of a handbag and a neighbor. There's no doubt about it. She's Jacqueline Cousteau. And she's the occupant. Right. All right, Van Rowen. Whenever you're ready. Oh, shut up. Will you shut up? Just give me a couple of minutes. Doctor, have you got an opinion yet as to what was the cause of death? It's all right, Doctor, it's all right. We're not hiding anything from him yet. Well, death was probably due to shock following asphyxiation. She was smothered, possibly with a pillow or some blankets. I guess you've noticed that the tardy use spot's not very marked, which... Yeah, what about the time of death? Well, she hasn't been dead very long. Barely perceptible drop in temperature. Subject to post-mortem examination, I'd say that woman was still alive at 5.30 this afternoon. 5.30? And you said that you got here at uh, 5.25? It isn't true. They can't have killed her. They who? Whoever killed Jacqueline, I was right here at 5.30. That's been a mistake. Your calculations must be off. She's been dead only a short while. Do you want me to hear any more, Inspector? The PM will be sometime later this evening. No, all right. Thanks, Doctor. Well, she couldn't have been murdered without you hearing, could she? Nor could the body have been dragged in there and put there without you having noticed something. Could it? Have you any objection to having your fingerprints taken? Why, my fingerprints? Well, you've been here some time. You must have handled a lot of things. I've at least got to know what they look like, even to eliminate them. And limp, other fingers folded into the palm. Thank you. You wouldn't find my fingerprints on her. No, fingerprints don't show on skin or cloth. Oh, I, I didn't know that. You didn't? A lot of people who do. Why are you all wasting your time on me? 
Why aren't you after whoever it was who killed Jacqueline? He can't be far. There we are. That's a lot. Maroon, uh, do you recognize this court? Yes, that's mine. I put it down on the divan thing when I came in. On the divan? Yes. Well, the body of the girl was on that divan. Now, you're trying to tell me you walked in, put this coat on the divan without noticing the body? She must have been covered by the curtains. Curtains? Yes, some curtains. They looked as if they had been put ready for the cleaners. Well, there were no curtains on the body when we found it. What do you think I did? Killed her, left her body on the divan, and then waited for your men to come and get me? But you me. didn't know that our men were coming. You thought you had more time. Now, what you obviously don't know is that there was a 999 emergency call from here within a few minutes of the time you say you arrived. A woman's voice said, Hello, give me the police. A woman with, a, with an accent. Perhaps French. And then silence. You remember the phone was off the hook when I came in? Well, Jacqueline Cousteau, realizing that she was in danger, made a 999 emergency call, but was stopped before she could go on by the entry of, well, let's just say a person unknown. Yes, yes, let's keep on saying a person unknown. And rather than have the person unknown discover that she'd made the call, she left the phone off the hook because, well, you see, it rings when you replace it. Now, she was afraid that you might hear that little ring. If she hung up. You mean the person unknown might have heard the ring? Somebody was here before I came in, must have been. You heard the doctor say that Jacqueline Cousteau was killed about the time that you were here. And you heard me saying the doctor must have been wrong. She was... She was killed before I got here. And the door was left open. That's what you said, isn't it? Yes. Now then, did the dead girl get up and open it? Or was it the murderer who obliged when he left? Well? I don't know. All I know is I'm telling you the truth. Now, look, I got more than enough evidence here to hold you on a suspicion of murder. Why isn't there aren't any marks on me? Wouldn't she have scratched, struggled? Well, I don't know. Maybe you got her drunk first so that she couldn't struggle. Jacqueline never drank. Why should I have wanted to kill her? Well, let's find out about that, shall we? Let's get to know you two. Now, where did you pick her up? Or did she pick you up? Nobody picked anybody up. She is dead now. Why try to make it look nasty? Oh, come on, Van Rowan. Where did you first meet? At the art gallery where I work. Now, this was a pretty expensive lady, you know. Why do you think she noticed you in the first place? How would a woman like that come to the conclusion that you were worth even bothering about? I'm opposed to violence, Morgan. But I could abandon my principles just for once. Let's get to it now. Now, I've got my own views of how all this started. Now, do you want to give me yours? Yes. Yes, it's a uh, little over a month ago, the place where I work, in Bond Street. She was shopping for a picture. Do you mind? I should like to have a look at that one. Over here in the light. That's quite exciting. How much is it? Mr. Desney will be here in a minute. If you don't mind, I'm not quite finished. Yes, I rather like that. Such elegant shapes. Quite brilliant, don't you think? I'm just a handyman. I do not discuss the paintings. You're not English. No. Then what? Dutch. I always wondered what Holland exported beside tulips. Now I know. Asked you a question. What do you think of it? What difference does it make what I think of it? You don't like it? Not much. Why? Ask Mr. Desney. I'm asking you. I am not allowed to discuss... To discuss the... the paintings, I know. Are you also not allowed to be civil? All right. I find that empty, pointless, time-wasting. Splash, splash, dribble, dribble. Like the yetta yetta when the fashionables come for a private view. It's your stuff, not mine. 
The frame's all right. Cancel your appointment at the hairdressers for once and go have a look at the Ruos at the Tate. Alone. For yourself. Not for some bright remarks. No one lost a night's sleep over this mug. Oh, yes. Lovely, fashionable, elegant. I like its backside best. Empty and cold as ice. Ice can burn, too. Can it? That's not a meeting you describe, that's a collision. This is, uh... This is old, isn't it? Or don't you know, either? Yes, yeah, 17th century. Study for a larger painting, probably Van Dyck. Fascinating. Well, you obviously saw each other after that. Yes. You find anything? No. Well, what, uh, what happened after the gallery? Who made the first pass? Look, stop treating me like a peeping Tom. I'm not interested in your love life. I've got to find out what there was between you and that murdered woman. The Saturday after our first meeting, I happened to be at the Tate Gallery. Happened? Yes, happened. I took your advice and cancelled my appointment at the hairdresser. My husband collects paintings, and now and then I buy one that I like. It always turns out to be a catastrophe. It's the first time I've been here for years. Do you come often? No, in the mornings I'm working at Desney's, the gallery. And afternoons? Oh, uh, I'm busy. Painting? Oh, really? Did you think I didn't know? Any real handyman would have better manners. One doesn't have to be a detective. It's quite simple. If a man wears a beard and a beret, he's probably an accountant. If he looks like a football player, he's probably an artist living in a studio at Chelsea. With a pile of masterpieces under the bed. I live in a rented room. There's hardly space enough for the bed. Much less masterpieces. Then where do you...? I rent a studio half days while the chap who owns it goes off to teach. On grey days, when the light is bad, I come here. Alone? I should imagine you'd have a girl. One of those intense little art students with a ponytail, green stockings, and dirty fingernails. Have you been in London long? Six months. Do you like it? Well, I suppose a city's like a mirror. When you look at it, you see yourself. If you're happy, it's beautiful. If you're lonely, it's not so beautiful. What do you think of this one? Well, I've seen it before. It upsets you. Why should it? Come on, look at it. Look at it with the eye that knows the exact color of her martini, her nylons. Look with that eye. Do you think I'm blind? Oh, we're all more or less blind. We can see precisely only the things we work with every day. Come on, you have seen my face now. Tell me what it looks like. Don't touch me! I don't like to be touched. All right, go ahead. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Yes. You were saying, your face? How would you paint it? What colors? Is there green in the shadow or blue? And my hair? Oh, that's easy, blonde. Blonde? What does it mean? Yellow? There are a hundred yellows. The yellow of lemon, the yellow of dead grass. You are a curious man. Are all your friends like you? So serious and passionate? I'm a stranger in this country. I have no friends. Two strangers in a foreign land. What about this uh, chap who owns the studio? 
I answered an advertisement in the papers. I've only seen him once. He usually has gone by the time I get there. I've often wondered what it would be like to paint. Many English women do it. It's quite chic. Of course, it's ridiculous. One can't possibly have talent excepting somebody odd, like the daughter of a butcher or a Dutchman. Wait. Wait! I'm sorry. Truly, I am. It's just that I paint myself. Well, I mean, I, I try. It would be wonderful to paint, really. Not a, just as an excuse for an afternoon of gossip. I only laughed because I was embarrassed, uncertain. I wonder if you'd consider giving me lessons. I am not a teacher. Well, then perhaps I could come once in a while and use a corner of your studio. I wouldn't bother you. I'd be very quiet. And perhaps from time to time you could show me where I've gone wrong. If I have no talent, at least I could learn to be a little less blind. No? Well, I just thought I could pay you rent. You could use the money for painted models. No. It doesn't matter. Thank you all the same. What? What is it you are after? To play a game? To amuse yourself with a little flirtation? To collect a new story to tell over tea? Or to forget your nostalgia for your lovely Paris? Painting is work. Do you think you can paint? Until your head aches? And your arms are breaking? Try me. And let those elegant hands get filthy? Make one stupid mistake after the other until you curse the day you were born. I know. Oh, you don't know. How could you? Here's my address. I'm there most days after two. Except on gray days? But if you want to play games, find somebody else. If you want to play games, find somebody else. Yes, sir. Postman's here, sir. Oh, all right, we'll bring him in here. In here, Inspector. Why don't you read the newspaper, Sergeant? Secret diplomacy is on the way out. We're in a new era. Everything open and above board. Sergeant, will you give this to my driver, please? Sir. Well, I, I don't understand why anybody would want to do her in. Seems to me the fellow who did it must have been Barmy. Lovely girl she was. Seems such a, a waste. You knew her? Well, uh, in the manner of speaking, yes, she was uh, easy to know. Well, what I mean to say is she was more continental in her way. Always had a pleasant word for me when she passed. Tell them what she was really like. You're not the police, then? No. Oh. Oh, she was really lovely. It seems to me the fellow who did her in must have been around the bend. Of course, uh, a lot of these nuts look quite harmless when you first see them. Now, take the case of uh, the fellow who did in the Eight Women. I forget his name now, but I used to see him drinking in our local pub. Now, as harmless kind of a guy as you'd hope to find. But he cuts them up and plasters them in pieces behind the wall. Now, to look at him... Do you, uh, like to smoke one of those? Oh, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm Detective Inspector Morgan. Ever seen me before? No, never. Did you ever see any of her boyfriends? Well, I wish I had. If I'd seen one now that I recognized, well, he might be the one that did it, huh? What do you mean, boyfriends? What do you think I mean? Now, look, uh, come and sit down for a minute. Right. When did you, uh, when did you first talk to Miss Cousteau? Oh, the day before Christmas. She was waiting in the hall. Did you usually bring the letters up the staircase? No, I didn't have to. There's a letterbox down below. But, uh, I'd seen her before. And I liked the look of her. She was a smasher. Yeah, don't blame you. A pretty girl always spices things up a bit. I imagine that you'd, uh, you'd knock on the door. Oh, uh, only if I had something for her. She usually waited for me. Waited for you? Well, uh, some afternoons, that is, for a letter from the bank. Did you ever look at the letters before giving them to her? Well, only to notice that most of them came from the continent. Yeah. The log fire was burning in the grate. She invited you in here? Yes. Often? Well just to have a drink or two. 
What time was your last delivery then? Four, four thirty. And you'd have a drink at that time. Huh. She was an early drinker. Drunk uh, quite a bit, you say? Well, not slop, you know. Uh, hi. No, but, but quite a bit. <laughs> Enough. It's a lie. Jacqueline never drank. You were saying something about the, uh, about the fire. Oh, yes, that's, uh, the first time she invited me in for a drink was Christmas Eve. You know, the, the light is better by the fire, <laughs> if you know what I mean. What, what was she wearing on that occasion? Well, she was, uh, dressed in a transparent, uh, a house coat, you might call it. That all? I have a heart. Well, I'm just trying to establish what kind of a girl she was. Oh. Oh, well, there was no funny business between us. You, 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 um, you described her as the easy type. Easy? <laughs> I don't know. I suppose so. These letters from the bank, did you get them regularly? Uh, one a week. Remember the name of the bank? Yes, it was, uh, Hope's Bank, Christchurch Street. Where's Stella? Yes, sir, Brian. I think it would be wise if you came by, sir. Yes. You mean Miss Cousteau's lived here a long time? Shall I answer that? Yeah, why not? We're among friends. She's been here for four months, to my knowledge. From Christmas on, that is. She's just moved in, I told you. I've seen her with my own two eyes since Christmas. Now, what are you getting at, Van Rowen? She's been here months. She just said it. The woman downstairs will back him up, and so will others. All right, thank you very much. You've been a great help. Well, I tried to. I hope you get the fellow who did it. Cheerio. Well, do you want to change your story? I've been telling the truth. I don't think you have. Your refusal to give your name or her name, that would have made sense, not much, but some, if she'd been respectable, but she wasn't. You're out of your mind. Oh, come on, Van Roon, you're lying to me. The story of your romance with this woman is straight moonshine. Look at this room. You're telling me about a continental lady. A lady who was intelligent, chic, fashionable. Now, what kind of woman decorated this room? I don't know. Well, I do. And you'd be surprised how often that kind ends up in the morgue. She was a, a typical victim. You're wrong, Morgan. You are wrong. No, I'm not wrong. Cheap, but not too cheap. Just enough to drive a man half out of his senses, ready for murder. What happens? You get a bonus for quick solutions? Why should a woman like the one you described have a flat in the first place? I don't know. To get away, perhaps. I... I tell you, she wasn't the kind you think. Oh, no. It was all romantic and lovely, wasn't it? Well, tell me about it. When did you see her again? After the Tate Gallery, she started coming to the studio. How often? About once a week. I never knew which day. It wasn't always the same. I guess whenever she had the time. Come in. Yes, 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 come in. Come in. There's no need to shout. The door is always open, as you know. Why don't you just walk in? Because I'm not in the habit of just walking in. I think I know you well enough to tell you a little secret. Women adore small, meaningless attentions. Like being helped with a coat. Thank you. It's always freezing in here. Why does it have to be so cold? One. Napoli's figurehead. And this? Mexican, fertility god. Oh, and this is Lid Jan von Roy? Stop fiddling about and get to work.
What shall I do this time? Draw. The same? The same. Not again. Charles the Beheaded. The name is not very apropos, is it? Anyway, I doubt if any king ever had shoulders like those. Jan, when do I get paints and canvas? I've been at old Charles for days. Michelangelo was still drawing at the age of 70. Hear that, Charles? We're going to spend another glorious hour together. It appears we're stuck to each other till one of us dies of boredom. And I doubt it'll be you. The human body is a continent. You can spend a whole lifetime exploring it. Oh, what a lovely way to put it. Thank you. Jan, where in Holland do you come from? Near the Belgian border. What is it like? Windmills and tulips? Coal mines and silicosis. And your people? Your father? I was a coal miner and his father before him. How does a coal miner's son come to painting? Who first decided you had talent? My old school teacher. Well, you know something, he was right. You know something, you talk too much. Stop jabbering and get to work. Now look, I will not be spoken to in that tone. I don't know what kind of women you're used to, but when you speak to me, I expect politeness. And that's some wretched, tatty little barmaid. I don't shout at barmaid. A barmaid works, and I respect her for it. If you don't want to work, get out! Nobody has asked you to come here. I told you. Quite right, so you did. Do you miss Holland? Not the coal mines. The men I worked with, after they've come up from the pit, I have a beer or to talk. You never paint women. Is that a shoulder? Is that what a shoulder is to you? The shoulder is alive, it's flesh and blood. Look, under the skin there's bone and nerve. If you tear it, it bleeds. Go back to work, try it again. and I have to go. I have a house to run, you know, and a husband. Has got an appetite for cognac and slapping people around when he's drunk. Oh, yes. Violence is not the sole property of the poor. Don't you know what goes on in those decadent Regency houses? When do I see you? I'll come here once a week. If anyone sees me, I can explain that as a painting lesson. More than that, I... Well, I'll come when I can. You'll call me the way you call your dressmaker when you have an hour to spare. Now, let's be clear about this. I have a certain position. And I have no intention of flinging it away. If you want me, there are terms. It will be where I can and when I can. When?
washing my clothes. I have been oh. waiting for you for days. I'm on my way to one of those ghastly receptions. I was due at the French Embassy half an hour ago. Great lady sweeps past, pausing graciously for a moment to distribute a penny's worth of her time to the poor. It's very kind of you. No need to be sullen about it. Have you ever given yourself? Really given? Poured it out in a flood? I don't know what you mean. It always amazes me about the rich, how mean they are. Always amazes me about the poor, how vulgar they are. Still, I don't deny it. It gives you a certain clumsy charm. It's good. It's not good, it's rotten. Nothing there, absolutely nothing. It's empty. What's the matter with me? I can't get it. Painted an old woman once, ugly, worn, reptilian, easy. She had been marked up by life. I thought what I'd done was beautiful, was right. I liked it. But this... Perhaps I'm not beautiful, is that it? What are you afraid will happen? If you really let go, if you really give yourself, what? You might spoil your dress, disturb this cool, composed face, disarrange your hair. So it was the last time you saw her. You sure you got nothing to add? Nothing to add? Well, I've got something to add. This was found in the uh, in the library box, among some other letters. Dear Jacqueline, if we're not to see each other again because of what happened, tell me. I won't like it, but I'll live. I can't go on like this. Not only can't. But won't. Nothing's worth what I've been through the last ten days, not even you. I haven't been able to work, and that's where I get off. Now, if I don't hear from you within the next ten days, you'll never see me again. And if you do want to get in touch with me, don't bother writing or calling. This time, you'll have to come to me, all of you. Heart, soul, eyes, loves, dreams, fears. And never leave me. Jeanne. Now, then, would I be... Jumping to conclusions, have I thought that you wrote this letter? I wrote it. Do you know how often in murder cases we get letters of this sort? Maybe not as well written as this, but the same general idea. And then do you want to tell me about this one? It wasn't all smooth. We had rough moments as well. Quarrels. I'm going to tell you something, Morgan, that you could use against me. I've already told you that I'll use any evidence. Except I think you're on the level. If by being on the level you mean trying to find the murderer, I'm on the level. That's exactly what I mean. Don't go. Please don't go. Is that what you call love? Half a stolen hour before the alarm. I want to be there when you wake in the morning, groping your way out of sleep. I want to see you wash your hair. to know what you look like at twilight and pale and tired after you've been up late. Yes, we'll have it. We will have it. Real time together. 
I promise. When? I can't say when, but I'll arrange it, I promise. Can't even call you on the phone. I can't even write to you. Would that help? I can make some arrangement with my post office. And let you know about the exact address later. That would make the waiting easier. It won't be long. I'll try not to make it long. Would you like to give me something? Give me time. Give me time. Jacqueline. Yes, Jan? What does this mean? Oh. A great deal to you and nothing to me. I had forgotten you worked in a mine. A woman can give you anything except money. Pick it up. Pick it up. Take it away. That all? Yes. And why do you think that could be used against you? So he's the boss. I'll be back. Well, Morgan? I don't understand, Sir Brian. Now, let me see. You wondered why I came, then decided Westover called me, then furious with Westover, and quite ready to be furious with me. Because you've decided, it must be something fairly important to bring the Assistant Commissioner himself, and you wondered why in the hell they think you can't handle something important on your own. I reckon that speech of yours has saved me a good ten minutes, Sir Brian. Yes, well, I'll save you more time, Morgan. Those bank letters Miss Jacqueline Custo received every week were statements of deposits made to her favour by Sir Howard Fenton. Sir Howard Fenton? Oh, you're impressed by the name. Yes, he's an extraordinary man. Friend of yours, sir? Oh, we know each other. I like him. Well, I don't see how I can keep Sir Howard Fenton's name out of this, particularly if he's been keeping this woman. Hmm. Sir Howard's been in Germany for the past week, carrying on important diplomatic negotiations, uh, which, by the way, are still being carried on. He's flying back at dawn tomorrow. Has he been told? I should think that will be taken care of at the proper time. Morgan, he can't possibly have any direct connection with this woman's death. All it needs to ruin a brilliant career, deprive us of a fine public servant, and upset delicate negotiations, is one word in the newspapers. Now, about him, where do we stand? Uh, the, uh, the doctor tells us that the actual cause of death might have been shock. Now, if we were to propose the lightest possible charge, perhaps manslaughter and not murder, and he might be persuaded to confess. The case will be solved quickly with the uh, minimum amount of publicity and the maximum amount of protection for Sir Howard. There may very well have been no real intent to kill. A man is standing on the cliff and somebody takes a shot at him. 
Avoiding the bullet, he falls to his death on the rocks below. If he did it, I still call it murder, and so with the law. And if he didn't... Of course. Still, we felt you ought to be informed of what's involved, the, uh, the other considerations. I'm very grateful, Sir Brian. It's your case, Morgan. The decision is entirely yours. Keep me informed, will you? Yes, I will, sir. Did you have to go over my head? Under me and around me? Where the hell did you tell me that Howard Fenton was involved? I'm here to help Morgan. What would you like? Or was he also one of your old school chums? Is that an element of this investigation? You can't trust Morgan. Have to be briefed by Sir Brian himself. But apart from protecting your friends, were you doing anything? Like trying to find out about the party of the first part, the lady who was killed? Catch. That's the old school spirit. Mind you, you get plenty of fresh air on the beat, but there's more oh, variety in cars. You know, it beats me why more young men don't join the force nowadays. I think they advertise it in the wrong way. All that stuff about pay and pensions. Now, if I was writing the ads, I'd tell them they'd get adventure. What heading does this come under? Recreation? Well, oh, I see you've got a sense of humor. No, I think... Why didn't you just write to her here? Why the post office? Well, uh, her husband... Oh, she wasn't ready yet to tell her husband. That's it. And she hasn't got a husband. Westover checked with Somerset House. There's no record of a marriage license. She was lying to you. But as you said, why should she have wanted to lie to you? I don't know. Unless your whole story's a lie. It sounds like a lie to me. The sort of bragging lie that kids like to tell. Mysterious, well I'm not a kid future. and it isn't a lie. Now listen, Van Rowan, I've been doing some thinking. There'd be nothing specially game by me putting you inside for life. There's plenty here for it, you know. If you had enough, you would. Now listen to this carefully. Supposing that you just, um, you put a cushion over her face to stop her screaming or something and she suddenly went limp. I didn't put a cushion over her face. Supposing you did, I'd be willing, right here and now, to accept a plea of accidental homicide. And let the real murderer go. Sergeant, you're coming with me to the police station. By the police station? Well, up till now, I've given you a chance to tell your story. You've told it, I don't buy it. You won't plead accidental homicide. So now we're going to do it the hard way. I'm going to nail down the evidence, and believe me, Van Rowan, I can make it stick. Now, let's do this quietly, shall we? Sergeant, that, uh, that woman in the flat, across the road, Mrs. Pilly. Make sure she doesn't look out of the window, will you? Put a man onto it. I'll get a car on right away. Where's all that? Well, she said that she saw you come in here this afternoon. Yes, and? Well, she said she's seen you come here before. Oh, that's impossible. I've never been here before. Let me talk to her. No, no, no. She's going to have to pick you out at an identity parade. It's for your own protection. Ready when you are, sir. Right, let's go. Make sure they get that stuff around the station as soon as possible. Eh? Very good, sir. Assistant Commissioner's in the Chief's office, sir. He'd like to see you when you've got a moment. All right, thanks. Sit down.
Any messages? From Sergeant Farrow, sir. All right. Do you want some? Your fingerprints all over the place. I, uh, I wandered around looking at things while I was waiting. Bathroom, too? Yes. And weighed yourself on the scales? Come in. All right, put them over here, will you? You weighed yourself? Yes. And, uh, washed your hands, too? Yes. Why, were they dirty? Oh, no. Just wanted to know what the soap smelt like. <laughs> All right, Baron. Turn out your pockets. Everything. Treating me like a criminal. Well, we think you are one. Then tell me exactly what you think I did. Now, look, I can have you stripped and searched. How do you want it? All right. I'll check that for fingerprints. I found it on the coffee table at Clive Muse. How much? I don't know. I bet you quid is 500. <laughs> A win. What made you think it was 500? It's a nice round sum for a payoff, isn't it? Why should I be paid off? Why shouldn't you? It wasn't a payoff, what was it? I tried to think. I. I can't explain it. Oh, it was a simple one, right? A one way ticket to Amsterdam and 500 pounds. She tried to give you the money before. That's why you thought it could be used in evidence. You're right. Customer! I'll see to those things, will you? And, uh, make sure he doesn't do anything to himself. Supper, sir? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. After that, Van Royen became insistent. Dangerously so. What had begun for Jacqueline Cousteau as an exciting interlude was now threatening her whole profitable arrangement with Sir Howard. She offered to buy Van Royen off. There was a scuffle. Uh, oh, well, you know the rest. She screamed, he panicked. What's the difficulty, Morgan? No. No! Jacqueline Cousteau didn't give him that money. She wasn't a giver, she was a taker. Well, you make it sound as though you knew. I do. My father was a chauffeur. Being brought up the way I was, you get to know the givers and the takers. You can smell them out. It's a question of background. Mm. And uh, where does that lead us? I'd like to talk to Sir Howard. Well, do you think the money could have come from Sir Howard? Well, it's possible. But Sir Howard arranged and paid for a cold-blooded murder. Oh, that didn't happen. Sir Howard couldn't have. Shall I tell you how I know? No, beyond any doubt. It's a question of background. 
Well, that 500 quid needs investigating. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll investigate it. Cigarette? No, thanks. And I, I was just thinking about you, Morgan, before you came in. You're good, very good. Among the best we've ever had. Uh, thanks for saying so, Sir Brian. Yes, your, uh, your kind either goes to the very top or doesn't go at all. But uh, going to the top calls for something a little more than a, a constable mentality. It calls for an understanding of the deeper meanings of public service. Westover? I can't seem to shake off this blasted cold. Well, hot rum and aspirin. That does a trick for me. Well, thanks for the uh, medical advice, Sir Brian. Oh, uh, take those for me, will you, John? Yes. And by the way, perhaps we see you for the weekend. when it points to you. I am innocent. Then something would have turned up, some small, crazy, tattered fragment of fact, but nothing has. Not a damn thing. Now, look. I'm going to paint a picture for you, Van Rowan, in black. You were in that flat when that girl was killed. You had the money in your pocket. least a half an hour before. Your only alibi is no flower seller in the embankment. Such a hurry to hang me. Who doesn't know you from Adam? Oh, there must be something. There must be something. From whom you say you bought some violets. The postman. Buying only violets so they could say, well, naturally, the flower seller wouldn't remember me. The postman said they were weekly letters from a bank. Checks. Perhaps from a man. Who? She agreed to have it out with you. You came to the flat. Who was it? Who was it? And you're crazy in love with you. Your letter proves that. Who sent her those checks every week, regularly? Who? Then she refused to go off with you. You grabbed hold of her. Morgan. What are you hiding? Who is it? Who? Who? She started to scream. You tried to stifle her screams. You must know. You killed her. Who? You didn't answer me, Morgan. Why have you got it in for me? I understand you, Van Rowan. I understand how the penniless, ragged painter was taken in by the brittle, elegant, expensive lady. And even that part of it wasn't real. She's a phony, an expensive piece of French pastry. Again, you didn't answer me. Come on. That's her, so just coming in.
All right, come on. Detective Inspector Morgan. If I may, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you know this man? Should I? Jacqueline, for God's sake. Lady Fenton, would you look at this man again, please? He says that you're known to him as Jacqueline Cousteau. Is that untrue? Not only untrue, but absurd. You can't identify him. I'm afraid not. I've never seen him before in my life. Jacqueline, it's important. Please. You're sure you don't know this man? Quite sure. No. No, Jacqueline, please tell him. I was waiting for you in that flat. They found a body there. They suspect me of murder. I know it's difficult for you. I'm sorry, but you've got to tell him. Tell him we know each other. Tell him I was there to meet you. He's insane. What he says is untrue. Quite untrue. I have Sir Howard's luggage in the car, whenever you're ready, my lady. Good. Have you finished? Yes, thank you. All right, come on. Do you recognize her? No. Well, that's Jacqueline Cousteau, and you identified her body. But I didn't look at her face. All I saw was the anklet. That's not possible. But don't you remember, I didn't look at her face. Morgan, I couldn't bear to see her dead. I felt sick, don't you remember? Look, Morgan, I swear. That woman at the airport, Lady Fenton, or whatever you say her name is, that was my Jacqueline Cousteau. Why should she use an assumed name? She's a family, social position, a well-known husband to protect. Now, why Jacqueline Cousteau? I don't know. Accident, coincidence, I don't know. Why would I walk up to a perfectly strange woman? What could I hope to get out of it? I know that woman, I'm telling you. And that face, that hair, those hands. The suit she was wearing. Morgan, I've... I've held her in my arms. I've kissed her eyes. All right, come on. Clean yourself up. Have a wash. I have to ask you some questions, Lady Fenton. 
I'm going to put them formally, since we'll leave them attested to in a written statement. I understand. You are Lady Helen Fenton. Your husband is Sir Howard Fenton. Is that correct? Yes. A woman called Jacqueline Cousteau was found dead in a flat in Clive Mews. Did you know that woman? No. You sure? Certain. Oh, wait. I've seen her before. She sang in a Mamad cabaret. Yes. You didn't know her? No. How many times do you see her at this, uh, this cabaret? Oh, I don't know. Two or three times. Were you alone? Alone? No, my husband was always with me. She sang all French folk songs. Sir Howard is very enthusiastic about folk songs. Why? All routine questions, Eddie Fenton. Don't go in. Eddie Fenton, have you ever seen this man before? I've already told you. I've never seen him before. This man was found in Jacqueline Cousteau's flat last evening at about the time of her death. When called upon to explain his presence, he said he was there by appointment. To meet you. Would that be untrue? Completely untrue. Jacqueline, Shut please! Up. He states that he has known you for some months and spent time with you in various places in London, including the Tate Gallery, a studio in Chelsea, etc. Would that also be untrue? Certainly. As untrue as the statement the assertion that you made to him that your husband is a chronic alcoholic. Well, my husband is a public figure and his private habits are somewhat well known. They do not include excessive drinking. The defendant, excuse my bluntness, but it wouldn't be the case, would it, that you are denying this man's story because if you admitted it, your husband might find out. No, it would not. You have never used the name of Jacqueline Cousteau. Never. You're quite sure of that? Quite. Now, Rowan, stand up. Gentlemen, Rowan, I am Detective Inspector Morgan of the Criminal Investigation Department, a police officer attached to this station. Beg your pardon, Inspector. Excuse me, Lady Fenton. Why? Why are you doing this? You notice he's left us alone. You want to know why, Jacqueline? Because Inspector Morgan is not sure. He doesn't know what to believe. So he's watching us. Be careful. Don't reveal anything. No feeling of any kind. But you shouldn't have to worry. You have a lifetime of experience in pretending and hiding your feelings. Why are you doing this, Jacqueline? Look at me. Why are you afraid to look at me? What will Morgan think of that? Look at me! And how will you hide that I held you in my arms? That I kissed you? There. And there. And there. Must I be subjected to this? Eddie Fenton. 
In the course of questioning, Van Rowen described that, uh, that suit you are now wearing. Every person is a black suit. In detail. Have you forgotten? I'm trained to see, to remember colors and dresses. Oh, yes, I remember the dresses. A printed silk dress, a black chanton coat with buttons, very difficult to undo. If you planned this thing, you could have spied on me. Anybody could describe my clothes. Could any man also describe what you wear under them? Could you? I don't know this man. I have no connection with all of this, none whatsoever. Well, I'm afraid that's not so, Lady Fenton. The murdered girl was your husband's mistress. That's a lie. You didn't know, Lady Fenton? Well, I knew he was having an affair with someone. Of course I knew that. What woman wouldn't? It happens in the best of families. I didn't know it was this girl. Well, Inspector, what are you trying to say? That I would kill this girl because she was having an affair with my husband? Having an affair? I oh, know it was more, much more. Look at these things. You can't buy them in a shop. You spend a whole lifetime collecting them. And look at this. You don't give this away like perfume. You give it to somebody you love even more than your self-respect, your career. Your husband was going to leave you for her. Leave you. You couldn't bear that. So there was only one violent way out. Kill her. Not ruin. Suppose, uh, suppose I agree with you that Sir Howard was going off with Jacqueline Cousteau. Well, now then it follows that Jacqueline Cousteau was going to leave you. Now, maybe it was you who couldn't bear to see her go. Maybe it was you who took the one violent way out. Maybe it was you who'd rather see her dead. But I told you I've never seen this girl in my life before. On the contrary, you stated categorically that you saw Jacqueline Cousteau frequently. You made sure to say that no one ever saw you together. Now then, how are you going to prove that it wasn't in actual fact Jacqueline Cousteau whom you were with? May I leave now, Inspector? Why couldn't you have come away with me? I could have made you happy. What was it? You were too old for me? Are you afraid of that? But you were young to me. All the things that should have happened to you when you were a girl, I was bringing to you. I did reach you, I know that. In a way I've never been reached before. You know it's true. You know it. I would never have left you. Because I loved you. Yeah. <laughs> so you really did know. You really did. Lady Fenton. One thing I could never really bring myself to believe. A ladyship. And, and I thought I had none of that left in me. Me, Detective Inspector David Evan Morgan. But that, that's what your ladyship really counted on, wasn't it? It would never occur to anyone that Lady Fenton could be connected with such a, a sordid case. But what you didn't count on is that I would have the completely stupid idea that your husband had hired Van Rowen to do her in. <laughs> if it hadn't been for that, we would have never gone to the airport. Am I to take it, Inspector, that you're holding me in connection with this case? That's exactly how you are to take it. Oh, I've got questions to ask you, Lady Fenton. Where you were yesterday and when? We have to verify the answers. Then there's that, uh, that clerk at the post office where you made the postal arrangements. Now, he didn't recognize the dead girl. But he'll remember you. You're a woman a man remembers. Sure of one thing, Lady Fenton. If you've done this murder, we'll prove it now. I must request the right to call my solicitor. Yes. Yes, you better have a lawyer. 
Sergeant. Yes. Yes. But what I didn't plan was that I might love you. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. 